And there it is. Another must-win game that slips through the fingers, Retro. It was a must-win. You said earlier today, a must-win. Now, it feels really bleak. I, like, I haven't even looked ahead. Who do they play next? That's got to be a must-win game then because, because they didn't win this one. Goodness gracious. It's Yeah, it's San Jose. Got to have it. Got to have it. I want to say it'd be guaranteed win night, but they had to have this one and they didn't win, so it's hard to say that it's hard to guarantee the wins now. Yeah. Welcome to Afterburner. It's Boomer along with our pal Retro staying up late in the Eastern time zone to be a part of it. Aren't you glad this is the one you picked to be a part of? Do you want to hear how I stayed up late? Tell me how. Because I nodded off for a second and uh, I was getting droopy eyed and then my phone dropped out of my hand and made a loud noise, which was great. (laughs) Yeah. And so the fat kid in me reasoned that if I start eating, because you know late night snacks are great for mm-hmm. it. If I just start eating, I, I'll, I can't sleep if I'm munching on food and stuff. So I ate a whole container of coconut chocolate covered almonds. <laughs> and then I mm-hmm. noticed that the meatloaf was still out. And so yeah. I had half a pound of meatloaf just to top it off. So, how much of that meatloaf did you have originally at dinner? I had the other half. The other, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do love your household. And it works. There's, there's I'm awake. two meals with every meal. There's the meal for the family, and then there's the meal for retro. Oh. Guys got to eat. Have you had a lot of red meat in the last two or three days? I have. I had the lamb picana, but this was a turkey uh, meatloaf. This was no, a turkey. Light. You're so healthy. You're yes. Health, health yeah. nut over there. That's good. Yeah, that's you. Well, here we are. Again. Another one goal. We can just add to whatever that graphic was they had the other day, leading the league in one goal games and one goal losses. Well, you can add another mm-hmm. one as they Keep lose three to two. Yeah, three to two, the Vegas Golden Knights in in this hockey game. And there's, I mean, we could, there's a few things we can talk about, I guess. I was I was dying. So Jonathan Quick comes into the hockey game. It's a one goal game. <laughs> And who clips him in, in the head going across the top of the crease? But Nick Ritchie. Uh, if this guy gets, gets called a penalty, yeah. in a one-goal game with the goalie out for cl- just needlessly skating by and elbowing him in the side of the head, like he's, he's going to be a – that would be a dumb penalty. You might be able to penalty. just – yeah, you can book your ticket out of town today yeah. or tonight, <laughs> buddy. Like, goodbye. Oh, man. Um and I wrote it down, and I'll get your thoughts on it. There, and I can see on the chat here, there's a lot of people on, on YouTube who have been chiming in. Why are we seeing Lewis and Lucic with five minutes left? Why are we seeing the fourth line with the goalie out? What is Sutter doing? Now you have a theory. I Yeah, I, I do have a theory. Uh, I think that it's... I mean... I think it's the truth, and I guess it is my theory, and it's. But it also upsets me to think that at game seventy-two or whatever you're playing, that this is still the case. I think throughout the year, Daryl has tried to send a message to his top guys to lead the charge and be the top players. They haven't responded. They haven't played with energy or emotion for whatever reason. He had the. He hasn't been able to push buttons with them. So he's relied on guys who he trusts, such as Milan Lucic and Trevor Lewis. And I think Walker Dewar has worked himself into there. I think Toffoli's in there. I think Backlund's in there. But he's playing guys that shouldn't be out there. They aren't your high-skilled guys at the end of the, uh, at the end of games. But he'd still rather play them and try to get the message across than to hand over the reins to the top end skill guys and see what they can do. It's it, that to me reeked of the dysfunctionality of this, uh, this organization. I didn't think the game, I, I honestly, they were losing three to one and I was almost sympathy is probably not the right word, but it was, I was sympathetic to their plight because I think they looked fatigued tonight 
and they've had shit travel and a tough schedule. It's not an excuse. They should have never been in this situation to begin with, but it has been hard, and I think they did look fatigued. But when it comes down to it, you look at all that, and you think, if you're this dysfunctional and you can't figure your S out, then you've only got yourself to look at in the mirror. Like, it's no good. They it's don't. Dysfun- yeah, it, it's it, dysfunctional. And it's not it's not one of those things where it's told you so, but it's, oh, well, give us some names. What do you say? It's been, we've talked about it. We've had Frank, and I know uh, we just had the Frank tweet up from uh, from earlier. For those that are just listening along, can anyone make sense of why an $84 million playmaker is stapled to the Flames bench with 20 seconds to play in a one-goal game with the season on the line? Now, the flip side would be, well, the $84 million player. Did you notice them earlier? Yeah. yeah that, was... that would be my argument to Frank, and I think Frank and I don't disagree with Frank, but that's why I'm saying it's dysfunctional now. It's, we can say it. They don't have to sugarcoat it or try to, you know, look too deep. They're totally dysfunctional. Kadri's, you know, clearly Kadri's got an issue. I don't know how this came about or what's what's brought it on. Huberto, I thought the same thing when you saw him go onto the bench with 20 seconds left after the timeout. But uh, like you just said, what the hell's he done all game? I haven't, I didn't, I didn't hear his name the whole game. So why should he be out there? Because he makes 84 million. He's got 40 effing points. Like I don't, I don't know exactly what he's I got, know. but it's not like he's undeniable. Right, it's so... hard because because I'm with you. Here's here's where, and I guess just to kind of piggyback your what I was thinking is I feel bad for the guys whose efforts and hearts are in the right place. Not everybody is mailing it in. There's just some guys that are limited in what they can do. But for the coach to be sending messages or feeling the need to have to send a message in game seventy three, agreed. It's not like you're torpedoing the season. You weren't going to make the playoffs, I don't think, if you won this game regardless. But you really had to. And then you call the timeout, you get your goalie out, and your fourth line goes. Yeah, but he wasn't... Uh, I agree with you, and you can use the 20 seconds as the example, but you didn't use... You were using Lucic and Lewis more than it, most players for the last 10 minutes. Right, like, I, and again, I, I don't. I'm done. Well, to say I don't care would be a lie, but I'm not. I'm not going to get frustrated over it anymore. I've I've had my freakouts and flipouts. This team is exactly what you saw tonight. Tonight was a perfect, perfect example of what they are. They're okay. They're good enough, and whether it, whether they could be better if the goalie. I didn't think the first goal was spectacular. I mean, he made it. He put it in the right spot, but it's, not, it's the save you want to have. Anyway, that's fine. But my point being, all year you've kind of missed a save. So maybe if you'd have had a save earlier in the year, it, it would have changed the whole yeah. projection of the season. But it, they showed us tonight what they have been all year. They're not fast. They're not highly skilled. They're not overly competitive. They're not young. They're not exactly old. They've got veteran guys. There's misuse. The coach is trying to push too many buttons, probably. The guys, but but on his, the, on the other side of that equation is that you've got top-end guys that aren't playing. Like, it's just, it's, there's no sense. I don't, I'm done. And, I'm and, trying and you know what? to break it down. Yeah. Like to that point, if if you were to flip it, and say, what are they? They're nothing. They're an they average not- team. And, and again, I just I keep coming back to it. They're a collection of players yep. that go out and play hockey every other night. I was yep. thinking about this. I had to drop my kid off. I was taking my kid to the rink tonight, and I was listening to the game. And I was, it was just going through my mind. And poor Lou, he was. Like, this has not been a good start for the Flames, and it was. I watched it when I got home from the start. I said, just a sluggish start. Shots are five to one, and it's. Just, this is how you start at home in a with your season on the line game. <laughs> and listen, <laughs> listen, I, I said I felt bad for him away because they were. I think they are tired. There's ways of getting around that tired. 
You can take some supplements that'll boost the heart rate if, if that's what you absolutely need. Yeah. Like, come on. And I'm not saying you go out and buy some, take some street drugs, but take a, these guys are professionals. They know how to get up for games. They aren't up for games. It's what this, what you saw tonight is what this team is. It's what they are. It's what they deserve. And it's kind of, I think it was during the other show, during Barn Burner the other day when you said, what what kid out there, what Flames fan, who's going to be going to the rink or going to the store and saying, hey, mom, hey, dad, I want that jersey. That's my favorite player. Like, who is that player? And I was thinking the same thing tonight as I had the radio on, and it was clear that this was not a good start and that they were going to be in one here. Who's going to lead them out of this? Who's going to grab this thing and steer the ship for them? You didn't. You couldn't always count on it, but you've had Iginla and you've had Goudreau and you had some. You could. You you've had Kipper. guys. Even Kipper. Even when the team was bad and missing the playoffs, you still could kind of look around and say, "That's the compass. That's the north star that's going to lead the way." I got no idea. No. Michael Backlund's a nice guy. He's been around for a long time, and, and I think he's you know. But he's but who's growing the and done. Guy that's he's gonna, gro- He's grown and done better, but he's not the guy that's going to grab the bull by the horns and wrestle him and take him down and lead. Well, he's never no. done it, he, you know, for maybe a game here or like the odd time, but that's not his calling card. Huberto's checked out. Kadri's clearly mad. Toffoli's going about his business and having a good year, but he's not good enough to control a game. He's a shooter. If you get him the puck, you can score. Dubé can't. The thing about I'm worried about Dubé, Manjapani, and a kind of that secondary side of things. Are they fast enough? Like, are, they're not slow, but are they fast enough to cause issues on the four check and to get in and to get the other teams spinning around a bunch? I don't know. But it, you know what? It sounds funny, but you take Pelche out, you miss his speed. Yeah, they're not he, fast. They are. They aren't. Dubé has has good wheels i think he's got good speed but there again there's it's good speed though it's, it's not it's... lightning like the, the whole league is fast right like i love i love dubs and i don't want to put the matthew lombardi thing on him but it's mm. like look how fast i'm going i'm going so fast everywhere i'm going i'm getting fast i don't know if i'm ever going to get there but by god when i get there i'm going to get there fast it's just wheeling around and going where it's you know work work smart not hard kind of a thing i don't know yeah i i noticed you could easily notice it tonight when Daryl said it a year or when, whatever it was that he came in, he said, we're playing slow. We're not snow. We're not there's slow. pace. We're playing slow. Yeah, there's a, there's so a I pace think there's part of that. Yeah. And you know what? You, it's another loss without Tanev and that's not the, the reason they lost right. tonight, but more minutes for Zadorov and moving those guys around. Yeah, that's not the answer either. It's, it, it's just a, it's a part of why this team is what they are, yeah, which that's, is, that's uh, what your question is. A good question. It's like, well, the one I said was, they? who's your who's your guy you want to cheer for? I don't have anyone that stands out. And what are they? What what do we got? Mm-hmm. How's your right, right? How's your goaltending? Well, it should be good. How's your defense? Well, it's kind of it's okay, isn't it? I think it's okay. How are your forwards? Uh uh, one, one guy's we got one guy's worse. Pretty. He's scoring though, right? Yeah. There's, I mean, there's worse forward uh, groups out there, isn't there? Yeah, I know. And then, but that's just it. You get. We used to say it all the time on the radio when we were pre uh, preseason stuff. Oh, we got look at a great team here. Look at all here. We got kids that can play, and we're gonna have a real up and comers, and we got some real talent, real talent. Really, here we go. Here. We go. Uh, have you compared them to anyone else in the league? Well, no. Oh, because they're horse shit and they're not mm-hmm. going to play. And then none of, none of them ever even made the NHL, right? Like it was like, oh, we got this kid. He's coming in. He can't play. And that's what this team to me feels like. I'm to the point where I hate saying it. Like I already said, I don't want to say I don't care, but I don't care what they do next year. I don't care. I'm bored of it already. Like, <laughs> If if you come back with this horse shit, you're going to take until January to get me to buy in. 
And you're going to have to be like 30 and 10. Then maybe I'll go, okay, well, I was wrong on that one. But if this ball of muck shows up in September, uh -uh. (laughs) I'll watch the, what's that? The, the nine minute (laughs) speed up version game. Yeah. Jason 30 or whatever it is. Like I, I don't, I don't need to, to sit here and and watch that unfold again. You want to bring the coach back? Well, well great. Go ahead. You want to bring the same guys back? Go ahead. You're, you're going to have a hard time getting me to buy in. Yeah. I, I'm laughing just because I know that's that's got to be the, the clip that they'll be using on social. Oh, great. If you bring back this horse shit, it's hard. And... and I mean, God, we got all we got month, weeks, months to talk about it. I don't know what options you have. You got so much money committed. You don't have a lot of cap space. You can try and trade a bunch of expiring contracts, but who's? Well, so God, let, yeah. okay, let's break it down this way. If the court, if the coach is the root cause of all the problems, okay, we're playing the what if game, mm-hmm. the maybe game. Okay, we've identified what we think is the issue. It's Daryl Sutter. We're going to, he gone. Great. That doesn't let the lazy bastards that went through a whole effing season this year off the hook in my eyes. Screw you. Mm -hmm. You wasted a whole year of fans paying for tickets and going and supporting you and buying beers and you're too god dang pouty to go out there and play hard for yourselves and your teammates. If you didn't like that coach, tell that coach to go sit in his effing room and we'll go play the game ourselves. We don't need your horse shit. If that's the case. But and there again, Darryl, who's, who's the leader? But, that, right? I, but that's my point that about charge? next. That's my point about next year, Dean. Don't yeah. give me the bullshit. Well, we fired the coach and now it's all good. No, no, no. You've, effing proven to me you don't care about winning what you care about is your feelings and if old poopy pants is mean to me i don't feel like playing i'll take my ball and go home i'll take my 10 million and go home i'll take my millions of dollars and bugger off there's a lot of them in that room and maybe the coach is one of them i don't know it, and the point you made earlier about just how dysfunctional it is, the the answer is it's more than just one guy. Yes. Because that's how deep you, you can just tell. And you saw it a long time ago. I keep saying it. And it took, I think there was a lot of us, and Pinder was one. Was, they're, they're too good. They're going to play themselves out of this. Whatever it is, it's new this and whatever. Guys will get comfortable. It just takes time. Just give them time. And they probably got worse if anything their longest winning streak of the season is three games they had one three game winning streak to start the season i just looked uh and when was the other one in december yeah well they had, they a had a, there and then they had a few they, were, they had a stretch in december where they put a bunch of games together where they got points and you had somewhat of a inkling of hope but but back to my point, it's not one person. I don't think Tree did everything right. I don't think Daryl did everything right. And I think the players took the easy way out. And it's tough because you look at it and you think, because you come back to the point you make about guys having signed those retirement contracts. If you've got all the money, you can afford to mail in a season. You, yeah. You've done what you needed to do. Yeah. And I just, you, I'll use Kadri as an example. And I'm not saying, because uh, you know what? That's that's the one that, that bums me out, man. Because I've always kind of liked it. him. He's had some bite to him. He came in at the start of the season mm-hmm. and played great. As like, this, this, is what, this is what this guy is. Toronto was too hard on him. Toronto doesn't know. Oh, he was good, great in Colorado. And, and now you look at it's, 
you just you know that his attitude, whether it's deserve it or not, is no good. And it's infectious. When you, that's the the thing. So any workplace, any office, any hockey team, sports. You got you got too many malcontents in there. It's infectious, and it just spoils everything for everybody. And you can see it. Kadri is wearing it right now, and I just didn't. I didn't see it, but now I wonder how didn't I see it the whole way? There's just no chemistry. There's no anything. I, I just, I think, I got thinking, and it's, again, I'm picking on a guy. I'm not picking on him. On, on Mackenzie Weger. Wanted, really want him to work out and all of that. I just think of how many times you've seen his face on the bench, and there hasn't been a sign of happiness, not a grin. Not, it's just kind of... Always distraught. Always distraught. <sighs> it's just, right? Like, it's always just... Oh my gosh. Oh. This is a bigger deal than I could handle. God almighty. And then Zadorov never smiles anyway. Markstrom's had a shit year. I don't know what you do for next year. I really don't. I yeah. wanted to... somebody beats me on social media the other day about, well, you're just going to have draft picks. What kind of team are you going to have? And I'm like, well, I don't reply in social media because I don't really give a shit. But just like this team, go. I, I'm much happier. Use your up next year with five new guys, 23 years old, ready to f and give her on a nightly basis. I don't care who the coach is. I don't care who the GM is. Uh, give me something to be excited about. Give me something to be excited about. Because I'm not excited about Kadri. And he's going to get older, and he's going to get worse. And Huberto proved to me he ain't about winning. And Alan Walsh can piss off. Great, you're sticking up for your players. Oh, way to go. Tell him to play hockey. Tell him to put some effing points on the board. And guess what? Then he doesn't have to worry about the coach being upset with him. Go dominate a period. Get the puck on your stick and do something with it. Like, it was. it's easy for me to say because all I did was shoot it off the glass. Okay. But if I had to block a shot, I blocked the shot. You getting paid big dough, buddy, to put up points, and you're not. I don't, I don't think it's an easy job, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what you got paid for. That's what you're going to get paid for, and that's what you should take pride in. Not packing it in. Yeah, it's 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 really a kind of unfortunate. I, mean, I was trying trying. And to you know of, the other thing yeah. I was thinking about, since we're gonna take cheat shots at everyone, Daryl surrounded them with coaches that ain't gonna say shit to him. Yeah, you think Kale McLean's gonna Kale go McLean's in there if he has a different anything. opinion? Ryan Huska, Kirk Muller might a little bit, but I know Kirk Muller. Kirk Muller's a good dude. He's not typically no. a – he's not going to ruffle feathers. All right, let's do that, Daryl. Sure. None of those guys are going in if they've got a different thought, a different opinion. You think they're going in and slamming their fist on the table? No. I, li I like them all. They've been wonderful to me. and I'm not – you always have to preface these things with that statement. Yeah, of course. Good yeah. dudes. Good dudes. Kale McLean was wicked to me when I hung around down in Stockton for one season. But Kale McLean is not going into Daryl Sutter's office and saying boo. Well, and I think, but, and you know what? I think that's maybe it's part of the point. Maybe there's, maybe if they could. They, they could help in some areas, but you're right. I don't, they probably don't feel like they can. I don't imagine that they do. And even if they got in there with a, a, a deaf ears is where it's going. I just can't imagine that Daryl's at a point in his life where he's going to be accepting coaching advice from young guys who have never coached. Well, and then it, then it is on him, but I would, I don't think they would do it. And you're probably right. Daryl probably ain't going to listen, but then shame on him. I'm not, this isn't about trying to give Daryl Sutter a free pass. Mm -hmm. Daryl's not been good this year. He's mishandled. 
When in the past do you ever see Daryl mishandle this many things? Never. Never. Right? Never. No. Never. Walk into he came here, pushed buttons, got Kippers off, got lucky, got Kippers off, go to the Stanley Cup final. Goes to LA, pushes the right buttons, wins a couple cups. Was in San Jose, pushed in buttons, got the job. You know, they never they went Made that, them better, though. Yeah. But they're a real good team. Yeah. And always been hard-nosed and always been a bit of a prick. But he mishandled Huberdeau. And this was all pompous bullshit that he didn't have to do in the media. It was mm-hmm. brutal. His handling of Huberto in the media at the early in the year was stupid. Plain and simple. Stupid. Same with the Pelche thing. It's the rudest thing I've ever seen Daryl Sutter do. And Daryl, I've seen do rude things, but not in the public sphere. He doesn't go to the media and belittle a kid after playing his first game. That's beneath Daryl. It's bullshit. Lucic and playing him too much and sending different messages. Like, he has mishandled a whole bunch this year. So it isn't about giving Daryl a free pass. It's not the old Daryl we trust sign. Yeah, He's got to pull his, get his shit together too. But those other guys, I still, even with that being said, I still can't give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't care how hard he is on you. I don't care what the way you played proved to me you don't care about winning and that speaks volumes i was thinking to when we had when we had kirk muller on the radio show right when he was hired and i think you asked the question because obviously you know kirk going back to your to your playing days and you asked him about what relationship do you have with daryl how do you know daryl how did you guys and he's like, yeah, I don't really know Daryl. I don't. I I met him at the draft or whatever it was. He was brought in because of his resume and to kind of be a a, a strong assistant for Daryl, I guess. And I remember when Daryl was asked kind of the same thing. He's like, no, you know, it's just you know, guy's good coach, and you got a good coach. If he, you just wonder if he had his way, how many guys would be on that bench? He probably doesn't need anybody on that bench. He'll run it. Like Kirk, empty net, goalies on the bench, draw up a play, give him the whiteboard, draw something up. Yeah. I don't know. And the, and the point, if you're going to make all of these changes, if you're going to change the GM, if you're going to change the coach, if you're going to move out the players, okay. And I'm not saying that that's the reason to keep them, but my question then becomes, who is going to fill those roles? What coach is going to come to Calgary? What GM is going to come? If the coach stays and the GM goes, what GM is coming? I guess somebody will. Somebody will. There's 32 jobs of them. And somebody's going to do it. But who with any kind of a resume or pedigree is going to say, I'll come and work in that scenario? <laughs> yeah, doesn't that sound like a fun place to go hang out? Right? Where The coach is almost your boss. He's pulling the strings. He's telling you the players that he wants go get them kind of a thing it's rough man i don't know what i don't know what the next few weeks holds but i i know this they played game 73 tonight when they wrap up 82 games these next these next string of games are going to be potentially tough to watch and we're going to be doing these shows and i don't know but as soon as the season is over and it's exit meetings oh. it's going to it's going to be high drama because what's happening with the players, what's happening with the coach and the GM, then there's the draft, then there's free. It's going to, it's going to pivot very quickly well, to, <laughs> to being very interesting. And you had major changes last off season. Are you going to see the same again here in Calgary? Well, might have to. Hmm. Let's do our, I'm laughing because I said, this this on a lot of nights is very easy and then on some nights damn man deep and his cheers of the game it becomes a uh, a chore it's our cheers of the game as we give a nice uh, post-game salute presented by man deep and bk beaufort liquor located on the trans canada highway across from wind sport beside mcdonald's stop in stock up 
on your way to the mountains or just because it's almost the weekend. Why wouldn't you? Springs, I mean, the weather's beautiful out here, retro. Time for some patio, some patio drinks, patio drinks on Twitter at BK Liquor, on Instagram at BK Beaufort Liquor. It's our cheers of the game. Who would you like to raise a glass to tonight? Well, we talked about it before. I'd copy you. Yeah. I just <laughs> but come... I don't know if that's no, you can. fair. I'm... Yeah, there, Nathan's in there already. It's 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 sad that it's that easy. It's Walker Doer. He's buzzing. Scored a goal that you know didn't count, and I guess it probably shouldn't have if the net's off. I guess they probably need to have the net on for the goal to to count. But makes a great play on the pass to Lucic for the for the first goal. And again, I just. Why take him out, especially for Daryl? The, the guy brings everything that you would covet and that you want out of your players anyway. I don't know why you would take him out. And I just wonder, I don't think he's going to be a 20-goal a or a 30-goal guy and a top-line guy, but I think there's some room for him to grow and to be a, a solid third-line kind of a valuable guy. You just like that he's involved every shift and every game that he plays, right? It doesn't look... he. He's involved. He's going. He might not be there, have it all figured out yet, but the effort is always honest, and he's doing the right things. I, I, he's been, you know, <laughs> he'd be my favorite player. If I had to buy a jersey, Walker Deer. Walker Deer, just Deer. He, uh, and you can see that he's he's getting a little bit more confident. It's what he, because he's seeing he, he can beat guys wide. He can beat defensemen. And he's probably done it at every level. And then it takes a while before you get that confidence. And now you're in the NHL. Go ahead, bud. You can do it. You're big. You're strong. You're fast. Cut to the net. And he's, uh, that's kind of how he scored his first two goals. Arizona got around the D and went to the net. And that's, that's what gives me a little bit of hope. And maybe it can, I'll do the buy it or sell it there. But when I think of Pelche and when I think of Dewar, you know, I, and I'll ask you about Coronado here in a moment but then you got wolf in the in net it gives me some hope that it doesn't need to be a decade of misery when you watch this there's some contracts that you're tied to and some guys will leave and some guys will stay but there's some youth there and if you could get somebody good in the draft here this year because you're gonna have something in the top half of the draft that maybe you can start to piece things together because i'm with you this this collection of players it does not seem like you can just run it back and they're all going to be happy and loving each other. Hey, you know what? I didn't care for you last year, but now that the coach is gone, suddenly we're best friends. I don't see it that way. A lot of these players are by now. They are what they're going to be as NHLers and it wasn't good enough. No, and I, it's, I don't think in today's world that you have to do as big a rollback as the Coyotes do. And, you know, even the Buffalo Sabres haven't made the playoffs for, what, 10, 11 years? Like, it's I – mean, they're setting records here in Buffalo. You have pieces. If you could get out of, from some contracts, get some more kids in, and trust the fact that these kids are good players nowadays, they can come in and make a difference – then you don't you're not talking about 10 years and the other thing you know, we we haven't done anything for 30 we've had one playoff run i know like whoa, yeah i know one one good playoff run in 30 some years that's that's tough right never like, picked never picked first overall and since 89 have had one, one run yeah. into the into round three. Not, not great, Bob. No, yeah, no, no, not no. Great. So, so Walker, do so, her. Give so us hope. Yes, see? come yeah. on, Walker, lead yeah. the way. Give him the C. He is our Cheers of the Game recipient. Walker Doer gets an assist. The uh, player of the game, the Cheers of the Game for BK Beaufort Liquor. Good people, family-owned business. I keep saying it. You walk into BK Liquor, buy something. Don't be a deadbeat. You just kind of say, oh, is, I hear this, oh, this is the one they talk about on the, on the show. Okay, yeah, well, thanks. See ya. Buy something. Support the family. They're good people. They support you. They'll take good care of you. And when you go in there, you don't have to be, now, is there like a surcharge or is there tax on this and some recycling bullshit? No, no. the price in the, on the case or on the bottle, that's what you pay. Pay it. 
get the hell out and enjoy yourself and let Mandeep get on with his day. It's BK Beaufort Liquor. Good people. Give him a call right now at that number. <laughs> it's late. Give him a call right now. Come on or in, email. Mandy. Yeah, or email BK Beaufort uh, Liquor at gmail.com. Um, let's, I'm going to do a quick, uh, little looky, little looky Lou here, uh, Red Show. The, uh, the out of town scoreboard. Not ideal, Dean. The, the two teams that the Flames are chasing. Remember, you had to get on a heater, take care of your own business, and then get a little bit of help. Earlier this evening, Nashville, one of those teams, in a way, although, is it even anymore? They yeah so they passed now the Calgary Flames so the yeah. uh, with three in hand <laughs> with three in hand uh, the <laughs> Nashville Predators in extra time defeat the Seattle Kraken by a score of two to one that is in a shootout so they improve to eighty points which yes leapfrogs them over the Flames who have seventy nine and three games in hand on the Calgary Flames well what about the Jets you say because they're kind of neck and neck both teams have played about the same amount of games well one fewer one less game for the Flames and uh Jets win by a score of three to two so both teams that you are chasing got victories you did not get one the gap becomes even wider and more insurmountable and again you're running out of you're running out of room. I think we're past it now. I think even the most diehard of diehards out there realize. Yeah. I, well, I hope so. I mean, again, the, the math supports it. I guess you shouldn't throw in the towel, but I, I would much rather they lose out than win four more games. Those four more games ain't going to get them there. No, and maybe if you lose out, you can improve your draft standings a little bit. I don't know. It's, what's the sense of ending at peak sadness, as Pinder calls it? Yeah. Boomer's in the sauce. I wish I was in the sauce. You're in the There's sauce, no boom? sauce. No, I was at Did the Did you stop in at Van Deep's? Or you're I at would Deep's? love to. You know what? I might tomorrow. I might tomorrow. Boomer's in the sauce. Hey, Eugene... You watch it. Mag McGarrigal. McGarrigal. Uh, is there anything else? Oh, I was going to, I was going to ask you about the defensive play on the, on the first two goals. It just felt like how far are the D going to keep backing up? Just keep backing up and back. Like at some point you're going to stand up to these, to, like you're going to have to make a play on one teach of these him. guys, right? Yeah. God you, try, you try to teach them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're not, a, I always say you're not the goaltender. You're not the goaltender. You don't have to block the shot. You push him to the outside. Let the goalie take it. Cover your yeah. guy. Things will be all right. Let's do our buy it or sell it. It's a presentation of Derek Newman of Newman Dean's Real Estate Group with CIR Realty. Whether you're buying or selling, let Derek do the work for you. You can email Derek D. Newman at CIRRealty.ca. Or call right now, 403-619-6661. He'll, uh, he'll do all the heavy lifting for you. He'll take care of all the work. You just find the place you like or find the, the, you're selling. With, let him do it. Let him do all that grunt work for you. You just relax, put your feet up. Um, Matt Coronado is, uh, is still playing hockey. He is with Harvard. Not Hartford, but Harvard. Two very different things. Um let's assume his season ends this weekend the point being that he can then sign with the flames burn one of the years of his entry-level deal get some nhl money get a game in and then in instead of having to spend three years it's essentially two years before he can then in theory get bigger nhl money my question to you is or i guess my i'll, I'll pose it to you even if matthew coronado loses this weekend i don't think he's going to sign with this team right now i think it's going to be a wait and see doesn't mean that he's going back to school or that he's got to make that announcement but i will i will put to the uh to the retro that he doesn't play any games with the flames this season oh, i'm selling that i think he does play games 
It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to walk away from, and it's a situation. You better know what you're going to get at the end of the day if you're going to not sign and get that year off your contract. That's hard to make up. That's a lot of time to make up. So I think he comes in place. And he should. And I would be ecstatic if he did. He should. Play him and play the piss out of him. And if Daryl can't do it, then fire, get rid of him now, I guess. I don't know. Like, embrace it. Embrace it, Flames fans. Embrace it, organization. Embrace a youth movement. We've we've been hard on guys like Lewis and Lucic. I think rightfully so. I don't think we've been ignorant to them. I think we've been respectful, and we appreciate what they've done for the game and for their teammates and, and the type of people they are. There's kids out there, and they got to play. Bring them in and play the piss out of them. We're, and I was going to say the only if he were not going to sign, it would have to be it would not just be because oh, things look a little hairy in Calgary right now. It would have to be something way beyond some master plan that he and his family and advisors have. And we're not led to believe any of that's the case. So uh, it's the buy it or sell it retro selling presented by Derek Newman of Newman Dean's real estate group with CIR Realty. Let Derek do the work for you. D Newman at CIRRealty.ca or call 403 619 one Daryl Sutter, always always kind of interested. Sometimes it's nothing, sometimes it's it's a lot of a lot, and you just never know. But uh, we'll head to the dome here from uh, CalgaryFlames.com and Flames TV. Daryl Sutter speaking to the collective media. Post game. I think uh, Marky really had a great first period, gave us a chance to stay in it. I think uh, kind of like we went to Vegas last week, we caught them with some miles. I think they caught us with some miles. But I thought we battled back and, and uh, it's, you know, it's, a, it's when you need somebody to make a big play, score a goal. You see a little more out of Codger than you've seen of late tonight? Yeah, I thought he was really good last game too. I mean, there's ebbs and flows. These guys aren't perfect, right? So I thought the line was was uh, really good in Anaheim, and I thought they. You know, obviously he scores. I think now he's got the power play goal too. What was the explanation you on the second disallowed goal? Which the uh, empty net. The empty net. Uh, Toronto called to the officials to the bench and uh, said that Luch. Knocked their defenseman to the net. That's why, and we weren't sure either because it was hard to tell. What's what uh? What did you do? Do you think your team had a chance coming back in the third period? Like, did you see the effort and energy? Though? Absolutely. Uh, we thought we worked hard, and it, hey, you know what? It's like we talked about this morning. You gotta. If you're coming into three and four here. You're gonna need four lines and three pairs and. We're probably a little bit short, and, and uh, Louis line scores a goal. And you know, I think they probably got after a cup flare defense, been pretty good. Looks like they slowed them the ice a little bit, eh? What did you say to the guys when you got back in the room afterwards, just knowing the what the playoff picture looks like right now? Just, just stay where you're at, right? There's not much you can do about that. They hear enough of Right, they hear enough of that, <laughs> so they'll need to hear it from the coaches. How tough was it for you guys to cut through their their defense? It felt like their their defense was cutting off so many passes. To I, uh, you guys asked this morning about that stuff, right? They're def- they are. Uh, we played some top division teams here that have top four defensemen that shut you down in the middle of the ice. There you go, CalgaryFlames.com, Flames TV with the post-game comments from Daryl. It was uh, happy, Daryl. That's that's you 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 get you get that guy when things are bad sometimes, right? And then when things are were good, it's, they're too good, and then he's then he's surly. So that was he's happy for Kadri and happy for Markstrom, and could have used the big goal though. That's Christ, has that been on repeat this year? Shucks. 
Yeah. Can you believe it? We didn't get that goal. Could have used we have a goal. the stats from the last game. <laughs> yeah. Could have used one more goal. So that's, I mean, that's, that's the story. How's, it feels, yeah, how, it, it, uh, how's the afterburner record? Have we bumped it up at all? Or are we still? You know what's great is the team has, with how they've played, taken all the pressure off of us. That's I think good. fans have come to appreciate no matter we're not doing shit here this is we got nothing to do with this it's very much on the players which is it's a relief it's quite nice actually to not have to live in fear of the afterburner record but it's not good christ it's no good there was a while there they were what five and oh or six and oh on games that we didn't do the post game it's all kind of evened out it's not our fault it all evens out retro your record is or you are what your record says it is, or whatever it is. That's that's sadly where the Flames are at. They fall three to two against the Vegas Golden Knights. They now look at, uh, as Daryl was saying, three and four. That was L.A., Anaheim, and then Vegas. They will play San Jose on Saturday, a two-day break, then L.A. at home, and then off to Vancouver. So just a two-game week next week. For, for this club hard to make up ground you only played two i know you need more games yeah you guys have played too many games christ um i i i've asked you this and there's no way to know right there's no way to know but it's so to end the month here san jose la vancouver well, i know how you feel about la very strong and then they've got anaheim chicago winnipeg vancouver nashville san jose for whatever that's worth. Is it is it going to be a spiral? Do we see does it does it get worse? Does it just kind of I wonder if it isn't uh I'll work from the goaltender out. The goaltender had a tough year. Had a kid came back and played hard. I I, I believe that. I think that maybe having that kid hung over his head for a while, you never know how that's going to earn affect a guy I'm, it's, it's an excuse it's a reason and i'm fine with all of it i thought he battled back after having that kid but now that it's kind of a real long shot mm -hmm. i think that maybe mr markstrom's focus is going to go back to that kid and i don't know if you're going to get as good efforts i mean it's terrible to say Maybe Vladar can come in and play hard, but he hasn't been that good. I watched the Sabres here stick around and stick around and kind of cling around and, wow, oh, we got a chance. If we could just do this, or if we could do this. And then all of a sudden they lost a few. Death spiral. Yeah. Do I think these guys are the Sabres? No, I think they've got more, more depth. I don't think they're as exciting or offensively gifted, but. I think they play more structured and a tougher defensive game. So I think they'll win a few more, but I don't think you saw three minutes or five minutes of desperation hockey in the third period, mostly from your fourth line. What do you expect that's mm -hmm. going to change the next game and the following one after that? And if Winnipeg gets another win and Nashville gets another win, it, in a way, although in a way, maybe it'll be easier for them because clearly they haven't been able to handle the pressure, whether that's the pressure from the coach or the pressure from themselves. They haven't handled it well, and the re results kind of show you that. So maybe playing loose and just say, yeah, we're out. So what? Let's go play. Whatever difference does it make, maybe it'll be a benefit for them. But I, I, I worry that they'll – I, I don't worry because I actually think yeah. it'd be better if they do lose a bunch of games. I see Robert. He's a member of Flame Station chiming in. The Flames have 41 losses on the season. The Vancouver Canucks have 39. Yeah. <laughs> Shows you where this team is at. Yeah. Those, those ex, right? The loser points. Oh, well, you're almost a win. That was almost a loss, right? Yeah. It was almost a loss. 41 losses. A lot of losses. A lot of losses. <laughs> a lot of losses. Right? Like, yeah. And you know what? I we can we'll talk about it next week, and if it goes the way we think it's going to go, right? It, is there any chance we see Wolf 
in a game? Does he get a sniff? Do we see any Matt Phillips? Because I know that they've qualified for the playoffs. And I would say yes, going, except but... that two years ago, Daryl was in the same situation. He didn't do anything to change. You lose a guy like Valimaki because he won't fucking play him. Like So I, I have no clue. I have no clue. It's a dysfunctional team. How do you judge anything? It's dysfunctional. Yeah. You you can't put stock in well, a guy's game today and tomorrow and having a kid. The, the coach is shit and this guy's bad and the GM doesn't know what he's doing. Well, the assistant coach is scared. It's dysfunctional. And See, all this, any of this them show, are, yeah. It, all, this show has been like a microcosm of the whole thing. It's been it's been a comedy and then a tragedy. And then it's kind of a comedy again. And then you're then you're down uh, again. Yeah. And then it's funny again. All you can do is is kind of laugh. I mean, you're right. It's and I do, do you fix that with uh, three weeks left in the season? No, Probably you not. sure don't, Dean. You sure Probably don't. Not. It's October. They were going to figure <laughs> this shit out, and they couldn't do it. It ain't happening in three weeks. Yeah, buddy. All right. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to our sponsors, Derek Newman of Newman Dean's Real Estate Group with CIR Realty. There you see it on your screen. Dean Newman at CIRrealty.ca. Great guy. Doing uh, doing the work for you. And, of course, our buddy Mandeep and the family. Be part of the family. You don't want to. BK, BK Beaufort Liquor. You don't want to pull a uh, Steinberg and just stay up for like four hours and take calls and answer. Well, I feel bad for you. I feel like you're going to be giving me <laughs> shit right away. I see it's been 51 minutes. You weren't going to, you weren't no, even but coming, I, some, I, coming on this one. Remember I ate, so I'm awake now. <laughs> Is that right? Got the meat sweats? Yeah. A full meatloaf. Oh. Yeah. No, that'll feel real good. You go, you go lay down and roll Start around in the, in your, in the sack. Up. Yeah, it'd be great. Oh, oh, yeah, it'll feel real good. That would be my <laughs> my advice for sure. Man deep at uh, there. You see the email bk beaufort liquor at gmail dot com. Craft beer, wine, spirits, good good people. Love to align ourselves with good people. I don't know how we've done it retro, but between between barn burner and everything else that's going on, got some great people on board. Very thankful for it. Very thankful. And thanks for nothing, Flames. Yeah, appreciate could the have had a nice big Calgary. <laughs> you know, when they make the playoffs, we could, wait, are we going to go out to bars? And yeah. Do, like live gigs? Live. What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? What are, what are we going to do? Well, th now we can bring some of the players with us because they don't have that fall to do. So it'll be yeah. good. They can yeah. help us evaluate other teams. Yeah. <sighs> Poor Hubert, though. When's that flight? You think he's going <laughs> to st stick around and... I'd let him leave now. It's like I said about Markstrom when he was having his kid. Just <laughs> yeah, send oh. him home. <laughs> Why are we yeah. fighting this? Let's just yeah. be done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being a part of it. This is Afterburner. Back next week against those LA Kings. Do you want to do that one? You want to be around? Because you loved watching the Kings the other night. They were so good. Real good team. Favorite yeah. team. Yeah. Real good. Hey, good All luck right, tomorrow. Yeah, I were. Get to bed. It's yeah, regionals. I don't know what that means. I think there's some uh, Chestermere, or I'm not even sure, but it's uh, mm. U12 girls ringette. So pretty big deal, Retro. You know who will be there? Peter Lubardius. <laughs> <laughs> to me, <coughs> the, the Beauview Renegades just, they don't have what it takes. It's about <laughs> slotting. <laughs> They're not slotted correctly. That's Afterburner. Well, have a good See one. you, buddies.